In the past couple of videos, we've been building up a water control system step by step. We started with a base 24 volt pump and added different sections to it, such as a water solenoid valve, pressure sensors, motor drivers, and more. And in this video, we're gonna be adding one more section, which is this water flow sensor. A water flow sensor is like a speedometer for cars. It checks how fast water is moving through a pipe from one side to another. Inside the sensor, there's a little wheel that spins when water flows past it. The faster the water moves, the faster the wheel spins. This sensor counts how many times the wheel spins to figure out a number of how fast the water is moving. It's the same concept of a windmill spinning to get the speed of how fast the wind is going. One thing quickly before we take this apart and I show you exactly how it works is that 97% of people who have been watching the series are not subscribed to the channel and don't get notified every time we put out a new project or a new sensor. So if you like this stuff and you wanna support it, hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when the next one comes out. So when we open it up, we could see there's an impeller in here, which is what we were talking about that spins around and counts. Then we have in and out. On the back, it tells you which way the water flows. So it comes in here, comes out there. And on top of the impeller, you might see this black piece here, which is actually a magnet. The reason there's a magnet is because for us to count how many spins the impeller is making, we have to use something called a Hall sensor. A Hall sensor detects the magnetic field every time the magnet comes around. That detection is converted into an electrical signal, which is sent out through the cable to our board every single time it makes a full spin. By counting these signals, the sensor can accurately measure how many times the propeller has spun around, which directly relates to the volume of water flowing through the pipe. And by being able to track the rotations of the propeller going through with the hull sensor, we can provide a precise and accurate number for the measure of water flow through the tube. One thing I would like to check as well is if we can actually calculate how much water we think has gone through this, and then we're gonna check in the second bucket and measure it and see if, uh, if it's close at all. So real life cases where you would see something like this being used would be irrigation systems for farmers. They wanna see how much water is going out to the crops. Aquariums use these sometimes. They wanna see how much water is going through the filters and making sure everything is good. And then these are used a lot in water cooling systems for computers so they could see the flow rate and put that on the screen. Most of the time, this isn't a life-saving device. It's more just to track numbers and not have to measure everything by hand. It's a lot easier to just have a number on a computer screen than to go out with buckets and start measuring everything. This paired together with the pressure sensor is really powerful because the pressure sensor, when everything's closed, can tell you if things are building up too dangerously. And then when the things are open and the pressure sensor is not reading anything or reading very low, this can tell you how much water or how much liquid is moving around. Together, they're a really good combo for having information on what's happening. So for setting up the tubing to use a flow sensor we're going to need a couple different things in the previous videos we've been using a 24 volt pump two buckets and a bunch of tubing in between we're going to be reusing that for this video if you want to learn how i did that how i made a 24 volt pump work with the arduino with electricity and everything i'm going to post the videos in the description of all the projects we've done before this one so you can follow along with the whole series to put this flow sensor into the current system we have we're going to need a couple different things we're going to need the flow sensor some pex tubing some connectors to connect the pex tubing and the flow sensor together some crimps for the PEX tubing to make sure everything is connected and that there's no water leaks, some cables to connect the sensor to the board, and we're going to need some Teflon tape to use on those connectors to make sure that there's no leaks. Once you have all that, you can start connecting it all together. I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm just going to start with this side right here from the water flow sensor to the 24 volt pump. Just get that Teflon out of here. Before I connect the sensor, I'm just going to wrap it up with a nice layer of Teflon tape. Make sure there's no water leaks happening. And we just take this and it threads on. And then we're going to put the sensor, I think like this. Let's see, water flows. No, so we need to put it like that because this is the inlet, this is the outlet. We're gonna put it like this. Get it lined up. Just like that. So now we have our 24 volt pump going into tubing then our tubing goes down into a flow sensor that I'm just going to cover up like this in case it leaks. Then our flow sensor just goes into this tubing and into the next bucket right over here. The goal is to see how much water is moving from here to here and what speed it's moving at. So now that we're done with tubing, we need to get our cables connected. The nice thing about the flow sensor is it's pretty simple. It only has three cables, a red, a black, and a yellow. The red and black are power and ground, and then the yellow is a signal wire. Mine happens to come with this connector. I'm not gonna rip it apart and start stripping wires. I'm just gonna use DuPont cables and start putting them in. And then I'm gonna tape over that to make sure they don't fall out. So first wire we're gonna connect to red. So the first cable we're gonna put into red, and then we're gonna run that to the five volt port on the Arduino. Then we're going to run the next one on yellow, which is in the middle, and yellow, it's going to go to digital pin number five. The input from the propeller is just gonna be like, hey, something passed. 
just an electrical signal. So it's on or off. So we don't need an analog pin. We're just gonna use digital pins for this. Then the last one, which is the black cable, is gonna go into the ground port. The relay is currently plugged into the three volt port. It worked last time, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. But usually you should have a breadboard and you should put both relay and of this on five volt. These are rated, I think five volt to 12 volt, but I'm not gonna run a whole power supply for nothing. So I'm just gonna put this on five volt. All right, so flow sensor is connected up to power and ground and digital five. Now that everything's plugged in, let's plug our Arduino into the computer and start writing code to make this flow sensor work. Unfortunately, for the code section of this sensor specifically, things are going to get a little bit complicated. If you're having any trouble following the code, you don't understand why we're writing something, check the description. I'm going to put a Discord link where you can join and you can ask all kinds of code questions and we have people that will help you out. I'll definitely have to make some kind of video on the programming side of Arduino in the future. If you just want to copy paste it, there's going to be another link down there with the whole code so you can just copy paste and then continue on with the project. As always, the first thing we're going to do is declare the pins we're using. We're putting relay on pin number four, and we said that we're gonna put the flow sensor on pin number five. Now, when we capture information from the flow sensor, we're gonna have to keep some things, we're gonna have to take some numbers and calculate them. So for that, we're gonna have to be making a bunch of different variables that I'm gonna put on the screen right here. For calibration factor, it's a number we're gonna be adjusting for our specific sensor. We're gonna have to do some measurements and calibrate it for this system to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Then we have five variables here that are all gonna hold different information for our calculations later on. So just write these out and you're gonna see what they're gonna do when we write the functions out. So then in our setup, we're gonna do what we always do. We're gonna set our pin modes. Relay is just an output because we're moving electricity from one spot to another and we're controlling that. So we tell the relay when to open, we tell it when to close. It doesn't talk back. Then we have our flow sensor pin, which is us receiving information because we wanna, we wanna hear what's happening in here. So we're listening for that information. And we're gonna set input pull up which is something we haven't used before. When you set a pin mode to input pull up, it tells the Arduino to use the internal pull up resistor. So we want it to be high until the hall sensor pulls electricity and that's when we know the impeller spun around. The reason we set it to pull up or to pull down is so that the sensor is consistently either high or low and it's not jumping in between the two because in the previous video we had that problem where electricity was jumping up and down and suddenly we were getting 20 psi when there was no water flowing through the tube. So using a pull up resistor helps us with that. The next step is to declare our serial.begin which allows us to write things into the console like we did in the previous video. Now's the time where we're gonna be calling some of those variables we made earlier. Since right now they're placeholders, we're just gonna set them all to zero and make sure that when the program starts, since we're in the setup, everything is set to this. Then we're gonna have to do something that we haven't done before, which is use this here, interrupt pin or interrupt function, method, whatever you wanna call it. These are used to start and stop the interrupt that listens for the flow sensor's pulses. So while the program is running, it's gonna be doing all sorts of things. But the second a pulse comes through, we want everything to shut down and just to listen to what's happening on this pin. The reason for that is if we were to say every five seconds check to see if it's done a full circle, it might have already done two and we're only gonna see one of them because we waited five seconds. So we can't have any gaps of time in between those pins. So we're gonna leave it always listening and then every time a spin happens, everything's gonna stop. We're gonna count that spin and then go back to whatever we're doing. You can't really tell the impeller, wait and let me do a couple things and then I'm gonna come back and listen to you because by the time we do that, it's on its fourth, fifth, sixth spin, we won't know. After that, we're gonna start our loop. The loop, it's gonna start off with relay pin high and a five second delay. What this is gonna do, it's gonna turn on the pump for five seconds. All right, we're done with the setup. Let's go into the loop. The first thing we're gonna do in the loop is turn our pump on. Here we have a delay, which means our pump will run for five seconds until anything else happens. After the pump runs for five seconds, we're going to turn it off. After the pump runs for five seconds and then turns off, we're gonna have to do some calculations to those variables that we made earlier. So you can see here we're counting pulses, we're counting flow rate, we're counting milliliters, and then we're counting total milliliters. And then we have a time counter. All these things are gonna help us calculate the number at the end, which is what we're going for. Then we're gonna do a little formula here and we're gonna calculate our flow rate. Then we're gonna do another formula where we're gonna calculate how much total liquid has moved from one bucket to another. As you can see right here, we're using our calibration factor and that's taking into account everything else here. The reason we're using calibration factor, here you can see the calibration factor and the reason we use it is that let's say we know a thousand pulses from this sensor right here. So a thousand spins equals one liter of water. And then we go and we measure the bucket 
and in the bucket it's a thousand two hundred liters or milliliters i should say here you can see we're using that calibration factor we talked about earlier the reason we're using the calibration factor in this formula right here to calculate flow rate is that we need the amount of impeller spins to be accurate to how much liquid is coming out and it's not going to be accurate for every system so we have to do our own calibration here's an example let's say we know that 1000 spins of this impeller 1000 pulses into the arduino equals one liter of water. And we go and we measure and turns out it's actually supposed to be 1,200 pulse for one liter. So then we're gonna divide 1,000 by 1,200 and we're going to get 0.83 and that's going to be our new calibration factor. And now it should be accurate to our system and our flow. So if that was the case, we would go up here, we would do 0.8333, whatever it is. And now it will account for our specific system and our specific situation and tubing and all that. So after we do that, after we calculate the total liquid, we're going to move on to printing everything out in the console. We're gonna be printing out the flow rate in milliliters per second, and we're gonna be printing out total liquid that came out from one bucket to another in milliliters. So 1000 milliliters should be one liter in this bucket. And then we're gonna put a 10 second delay just to make sure nothing's leaking, there's no problems, we have 10 seconds to kind of look around. One thing I forgot to mention is actually the delay is supposed to go under the if statement. And right here, after we print out everything, we need to add our pulse counter to make sure that we're counting how many pulses we have overall. And we're going to be attaching our pin back again, which we detached right over here. And then in the bottom, after the delay and after your loop, you're going to be adding this right here. This is our little function here, which is going to be adding to the pulse counter. So now we want to get started with the demo since we finished all the code. I'm just going to comment out everything from here all the way down to the delay. So all our calculations and all that, we're going to comment that out. And I just want to run the pump for five seconds on and then 10 seconds off. On for five seconds and then off for 10 seconds. We can adjust this to maybe just one second on, one second off, and just check for any water leaks, make sure we don't start spilling water everywhere like we did before. So on one second, off one second, on one second, off. Pump in the plug and we have water flow. All right, so we know water is going through. I don't see a single water leak this time, nothing is wet. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to comment this out. I'm gonna upload it to the board so that it stops triggering the pump. Completely empty, let's dump that in there. Now let's test our flow sensor. So what I'd like to do is comment out or uncomment absolutely everything and run it with the pump not connected. So just info from the sensor should be coming through and it should be zero and then we can kind of calculate it to make sure that it's done right. So we go here to tools, go to serial monitor. We go to our setup, we see we're doing 9,600 over here. So we're gonna reset this. Flow rate zero, total liquid zero. That's good. It's not telling us 20 PSI like the last project. So if things are at zero, we're happy. Now what I'd like to do is plug in the pump for a second, let it run. and unplug it. Now we can see we're still at zero. So something is not right. Just gonna make sure that everything is plugged in properly and that our flow is going in the right direction. It's plugged into pin number five. It's plugged into the positive over here, negative over there. So our cables are good. Let's go up here. Flow sensor is pin number five. Just gonna upload the code again. Open up the serial monitor, clear it, and see if the number is still zero. Okay, so we're still reading zero. I'm going to turn on the pump for five seconds and then 10 seconds like we had it set up before. We're gonna see if keeping it open longer makes a difference. Okay, we're still reading zero, so I'm gonna unplug the pump. Pour the water back in. So we know the water is moving from one place to another. That's all good, but we have a problem with our system where we're not reading any flow at all. 
what I'm thinking is there's probably a bad connection or we missed something really small on the code. So I'm just gonna change my pin number five to pin number three to see if maybe there's an issue with pin number five. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm just going to change that. So you can see now it's pin number three, pin number three. Everything else we're leaving the same. Relay pin is still number four. And if we reset this, we should see that it's reading zero. Yep, it's reading zero. All right, let's plug the pump in. Let's let it run once for five seconds. Let's see if anything changed. Okay, so now on pin number three, it's working. So I'm gonna unplug the Arduino quick before it runs again. So we're getting 23.45 milliliters per second and the total liquid is 23 milliliters. So one more time, I'm gonna dump this over here. We're running it for five seconds to get our water flow. So what I would like to do is to run it for five seconds, measure how much water is in the bucket and see how off we are over here. And then we can kind of do some calculations and get it calibrated. So I'm gonna plug in this one more time. I'm gonna reset it. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna unplug it. It's saying we've done 69.64 milliliters per second and that the total liquid is 69 milliliters. Now something's off here. If we ran it for five seconds, at let's say 70 milliliters per second, our total output should not be 70 milliliters because we ran it for five seconds. And if I go into my little measuring cup right here, we're just, just between 200 and 250. So we're, let's say 230. So if we did 70 milliliters per second, four or five seconds, 350 should be our number. But what we really got is, let's say 230. So we're about 120 milliliters off right now. Well, it's been about four hours since the last clip I filmed and we ran into a lot of issues. The first thing mainly that I'm not very good at math, so I made a lot of calculation problems. Also the calibration factor, the way it was being used was not very good. So what I did was rewrite everything from scratch. It still has the same idea. The calibration factor does the same thing. Everything kind of does its same job that we went over. It's just the order and everything is completely different. Now I wanna do another demo to prove that it works. So I'm going to dump out this and I'm going to run the code. The current calibration factor is 0.42. The reason I was having a hard time with the calibration factor is that my pump, my tubing size, everything kind of in this scenario is not the same as everyone else. And that's the reason that we have a calibration factor. But because of the way my stuff is set up where I'm going big tube to small tube, I'm using a submersible pump with different levels of water, all these different things. It was kind of messing with the consistency of the number. So now with a 0.42 calibration factor, we're gonna upload that to the board. And then you should see the board turn on. See that light? We're gonna wait for it to turn off and then I'm gonna plug in my pump. Now that it's off, I'm gonna plug in the pump. I'm gonna go serial monitor, I'm gonna reset. And now we should see our number popping up. Last time we measured in the cup, it was 230 milliliters of water. We're gonna let this run. We're gonna unplug the pump. And as you can see, we're right around that. To show how accurate this could be, if you could get it properly calibrated, I have a scale, which I'm gonna just put like this. So we got 221 milliliters with 47.62 flow rate. I'm gonna put the cup on the scale. I'm going to zero it. And now I'm going to pour out our outputted water into our cup. So I know it's a little hard to see in the scale, but it says 218 grams. And over here, we have 221 on the screen in the code here. So we're only four or, f four or five off in terms of measurement. And we can always fine tune the calibration. I only have it two decimals. We can always, you know, add something like this and then it would be even more accurate. For the calibration factor, if you want to calculate yourself when you do your project, I'm going to put the formula up on the screen and then you can do that yourself to figure out what the perfect and ideal situation number is for you. It's unfortunate that these videos sometimes don't go the way they're supposed to. So that was four hours just to figure out how to get it that close. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to see more stuff like this. In the next video, we're going to be adding one more thing into the system before we build a big project involving everything. If you're looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when I post it. If you have any questions, join the Discord. We have people out there that can help you out with your problems. And I'll see you in the next one.